Good afternoon students. We learned about the importance, need and scope of ECCE in the last class. Today, let us learn about the principles and the developmental objectives of ECCE. The first six years are considered to be the golden period in a child's life. Children grow faster and learn to move quicker during the first six years than at any time later. In this formative period, development takes place rapidly in terms of acquisition of skills, habits, attitudes, concepts and the power of observance as well as ability to think and to communicate. The development of human personality rests on the sound foundation of social, emotional, physical and intellectual development of the child built during the stages of infancy and school going age. Early childhood care and education that is ECCE stands as a prelude to the entire development of the child in future. ECCE aims at the total development of the child physical, motor, emotional, social, cognitive, language and moral. It is important to note that attendance in preschools does not automatically guarantee better academic achievements. Quality aspects such as a healthy environment, meaningful objectives, stimulating and encouraging activities, caregiving teachers are imperative to ensure all round development in children. By learning this lesson, the students learn the objectives of early childhood care and education, the principles underlying the objectives of ECCE, how ECCE enables the children to develop holistically. Now let us learn about the developmental objectives of ECCE and the activities. Early childhood, as a matter of fact, is the foundation period of life. The total development of the child manifests itself in three dimensions, namely physical or motor, psychological including perceptual, intellectual and personality development, as well as behavior consisting of socio-emotional development and language development. The need and scope of ECCE are very many. In order to develop, fulfill the developmental needs of children during the formative period that is 0 to 6 years, ECCE is an essential component which promotes various skills, basic motor skills, good physique, adequate muscular and eye-hand coordination are to be developed in children. As the child grows physically, he progressively attains strength, muscular coordination and precision in using the body parts. The more coordinated process is called motor development. Motor development depends upon neural and muscular maturation and readiness. There is a definite pattern followed in motor development that is from head to foot and proceeds from mass activities to specific activities. Motor skills are classified into gross motor skills and finer motor skills. Gross motor skills are those that involve the movement of larger muscles such as crawling, running, skipping, jumping, climbing, walking, balancing, throwing, catching, swinging and kicking. Gross motor skills are subdivided into two types. The first is related to those skills that mainly lead to the physical development. Activities like walking, running, skipping and climbing fall into this category. There are other gross motor skills like throwing, catching, balancing, kicking, hitting and hopping which require more coordinated action of movements. Fine motor skills involve 
finer movements of muscles. They require proper coordination of eyes, hands and fingers. Writing readiness is one such skill which involves learning to hold a pencil and then mark with it in a desired direction. Skills like painting, sorting, drawing, folding, cutting, pasting, marking and the like fall into this category. The other activities that promote gross and finer motor activities are free and structured play activities involving running, jumping, climbing, hopping, throwing, catching, balancing, rolling, walking, cycling, hitting, bending, pushing, pulling, gripping, swimming, drawing, painting, carrying paper, cutting, crayoning, printing, making impressions, threading, sewing, sand and water play, clay work, free play with puzzles and wooden pieces, coloring, singing, dancing, building blocks, assembling toys, buttoning, fastening sips, action songs, walking forward and backward, wax crayons, pencils and chalk, folding papers, cutting paper with a small scissors, ascending and descending on a ladder, folding, chairing and pasting of a paper. 2. Inculcation of good health habits in children and to build up basic skills necessary for personal adjustment. Activities for this are child at this age needs to develop certain basic skills necessary for day-to-day -day life which in turn become habits such as dressing, toilet habits, eating, washing and cleaning. Skills for toilet habits, eating, dressing and undressing, folding the carpets, keeping the things in its place, washing hands before and after meal, maintaining personal cleanliness, eating in proper way that is etiquette, using the toilet properly, putting garbage into dustbins, coming to the preschool regularly. Habits of keeping classroom clean. The third <coughs> principle is develop desirable social attitudes and manners and to encourage healthy group participation, making the child sensitive to the rights and privileges of others. Beginning with the preschool stage, the process of socialization continues throughout life. The ability of the child to interact with other children and adults at home and in school situations is referred to as social behavior. The development of this ability enables the children to get adjusted to the social group. Through the process of socialization, the child learns the ways of norms of society, values and other social attributes of the culture. Activities promote social development or the ECCE provides more opportunities for children to take part in group activities organized. Greeting the teachers, waiting for one's turn, cooperative play, organized game and outdoor play activity or some of the activities through which Children learn to wait for their turns and respect others. Children are guided by the teachers to follow certain social ethics and use of words such as thank you, sorry and please. Fostering independence. Activities that require sharing. Celebrations, dramatic play, fancy dress show. Allotting duties and responsibilities children. The fourth objectives is develop emotional maturity by guiding the child to express, understand, accept and control his feelings and emotions. Emotions are the essential parts of one's life. Emotions are brief, intense and transitory. Some of the common emotions are love and affection, anger, fear, jealousy, aggression, anxiety or joy. Now the activities which promote this are 
gradual adjustment to school, opportunities to express positive and negative emotions in a healthy manner, able to recognize common emotional status like happy, sad, afraid, creating an atmosphere that breeds trust and security in the child. Variety of activities that satisfy the child's needs for both boisterous and quiet play. Paper tearing, scribbling on a paper, clay modeling, finger printing, dancing, singing and water play are few activities that channelize the negative emotions. Imaginative play, play in a doll corner, shop play that is dramatization through which children act out or express situations which may cause anxiety. The next objective is encourage aesthetic appreciation. Creative activities such as painting, crayoning, coloring, painting, field trip, nature walk, appreciate beauty in nature, sand play, craft and artwork, decorations in the school. The next is stimulate the beginning of intellectual curiosity concerning the environment and to help to understand the world. Just as the physical structure of the body grows due to the assimilation of nourishment available from food, the mental or intellectual structure obtains the nourishment through receiving, reacting and interacting with the environmental stimuli. For example, a child who can grasp, bite, shake or throw an object when confronted with a new object, say a doll, will try the same to understand or assimilate information about it. Now how can they do this? For the development of five senses, games and activities for visual discrimination, activities with the touch cards, varying textures to develop the sense of touch, storytelling, songs and informal talk with children, question answer session for sound discrimination, activities with objects varying in smell, activities with the different foods for taste, development of memory and observation is possible through zigzag puzzles, identifying similar and different objects, Activities for self-exploration, treasure hunt, story narration by recall, development of skills of classification is possible from provision of play equipment, blocks, puzzles in different shapes, color, size. Activities that impart different concepts. Development of problem solving and reasoning is possible through Activities involving solving of problems like relationship cards, answering simple questions, story narration. Now let us see how the formation of basic concepts take place. Activities to identify and name different colors, color concept. Activities to match, identify and name the basic colors such as red, blue, yellow, black and white by three to four years. Activities to understand that mixing, blending of colors leads to formation of new colors. Activities to enable the child to match, identify and name colors like orange, purple, brown and pink by four to six years. Activities to match unidentified circle, square, and triangle concept of shape. Activities to enable the children to identify a circle, a square and triangle, draw a circle by three to four years. Activities to enable the children to name a circle, a square, a triangle and relate these two objects in the environment. The ability to match, identify and name big small, long short, Heavy light, tall short, thick thin, wide narrow, far near, through various activities such as water play, sand play, block play, dramatization, 
rhymes, games, puzzles, blocks, sand, clay and form the number of concepts. Development of the ability to reorganize positions like in out, over under, left and right, front back, above below, top bottom, before after, here there, to form the concept of space. To form the concept of time, activities such as informal talk, readiness program, telling day night, afternoon evening, before after, early late, hours related to daily routine, recall of daily routine, the use of clock for reading time, names of the month, days of the week, development of positive self-concept such as awareness of themselves and feel good about who they are, what they are, have feelings of self-worth. Some suggested activities are celebrate each child's birthday, month-wise calendar of birthdays can be made and hung in the class, make name cards of each child in the class, put up child's drawings prominently for display, praise children liberally. Concept of temperature, science activities to identify hot and cold, formation of environmental concepts through conversation, free talk, displays, sand model, field trip, simple experiments, dramas and organized games, concept of myself, family, pet and wild animals, vegetables and fruits, plants, transport, community workers, festivals, air, water, universe and seasons. The next objective of ECCE is to develop the child's ability to express his feelings and thoughts in fluent, correct and clear speech. Development of listening skills. Developing the skills of sound discrimination, enhancing listening span and listening comprehensions. Activities such as structured conversation, listening and vocabulary games, rhymes, dramatization, storytelling, reading aloud, puppet show, picture, word matching, help children to acquire sound discrimination, enhance listening span and comprehension. Development of verbal expression. Vocabulary development, fluency and clarity of expression, talking in sequence and creative self-expression through rhymes, songs, riddles, making puppets, puppet show, picture board matching. Vocabulary related to body, home, biological, physical and social environment to be developed through activities like free conversation, storytelling and role play. Development of reading, writing and arithmetic readiness. Readiness is a stage when children are mature enough and are ready to learn without undue intellectual or emotional stress. In order to develop reading readiness, specific activities are required to be undertaken in auditory discrimination, visual discrimination, auditory and visual associations and directionality. Next objective is encourage independence and creativity by providing the child with sufficient opportunities for self-expression. They are possible by free play, by choosing their activities, assigning responsibilities to child like putting away the material, keeping the room in order, fetching registers, etc. In group activities, let children by rotation take on lead roles in singing or playing games, telling stories individually to the group. Foster new interest through opportunities to investigate and experiment is the next objective. Treasure hunt, hide and seek, musical chair are the common activities that promote interest in children. Development of an attitude 
of empathy and care towards the whole, the differently abled and the needy. Structured conversation, storytelling and dramatization are activities which through which children can be exposed to the concepts of old, differently abled and needy persons and the need to empathize with them and care for them. Next is the development of self-confidence. Should be able to develop confidence for participating in group activities, suggested activities or circle games, group, part group recitation of rhymes and songs, dramatization, free conversation, encourage children to perform individually in front of other children. Now what are the facilities required in the ECC center? Indoor facilities, the classrooms in a preschool early childhood center actually are shaped as interest centers where they can easily move about and make choices. Separate spaces may be arranged for building blocks, household set, doctor's set, doll corner, set for make-believe games, simple construction tools, picture books, comics, science experiments, manipulative materials, assorted items for cognitive development like beads, mathematical numerals, crayons, scissors, paints, drums, clay, brushes for creative activities, pets and plants, rhythmic instruments. Outdoor facilities required are neat and clean environment in an ECC center is a must for health, habit formation and sending the proper message to the community. The other factors to be considered are adequate ventilation and lighting, sound proofing, color treatment to walls, cabinets, floors, ceilings, avoiding sharp corners and edges, providing non-skid surfaces. Objectives of ICDS. Now, Integrated Child Development Scheme, ICDS, being the world's largest program as one of the leading ECC centers, having 5,652 ECC center projects, operational all over India, with 4,533 projects in rural areas, 759 projects in tribal areas and 360 projects in urban areas. It is necessary to understand the specific objectives of ICDS such as improvement in health and nutritional status of children below 6 years, reduction in mortality, reduction in morbidity, reduction in malnutrition, laying the foundation for proper psychological, physical and social development of children, reduction in school dropout rates, coordination of policy and implementation, enhancement of mother's capacity to look after the health and nutritional needs of the children. ICDS has already reached a stage where it is essential not only to universalize its expansion but also to enrich its contents. This emerging profile of ICDS re-indicates itself to promoting early childhood care for survival, protection and development. These objectives are met through the package of services provided in the Anganwadi Center and include supplementary nutrition, immunization, health checkup and treatment of minor ailments, referral services, preschool education, nutrition and health supporting services such as drinking water and sanitation. Now, you should know the principles followed for formulating the objectives of UCC. One, children's development covers various domains such as physical, motor, emotional, cognitive and moral development. The program should be organized to meet the needs of these domains. 
Second principle is age appropriate activities to foster the various domains of development. In ACC centers, children from 2 to 6 years are enrolled. Their developmental levels vary. Hence, the program should be different according to age and developmental level. So, grouping is important. That is, 2 to 3 years VKG, 3 to 4 years LKG, 4 to 5 and a half years UKG. Now, the third principle is family background and immediate environment need careful consideration. Family income, size of the family, parents' education, number of siblings and residential area have to be considered. Keep in mind the individual differences of the child is the next principle. Some children are fast in development, few are slow in growth. This individual differences is to be kept in mind while framing the objectives and planning activities. Next, balance between formal and informal learning. This should be the activities of both formal and informal. Thematic approach. What is thematic approach? Children enter VCC centers without much orientation. They have to be oriented with various themes to know about the world. Various themes such as family, community workers, colors, wild animals, etc. could be introduced. Play-based activities. More of play-based activities to be included in the objectives of the ECC center. Now balance between individual and group needs. Active and passive activities. Outdoor and indoor activities. Free and structured activities. Individual and group activities are necessary to meet the individual's and group needs for development. For example, free play or organized game. Programs in an ECC center to be balanced between active play and quiet play. If only active play, children become tired. In order to think creatively, quiet play is necessary. Free and structured play. Children playing in an outdoor area on their own as they like is called free play. A play activity planned by the teacher for prescribed number of children with a certain rules is known as structured play. Activities encourage self-discipline, independence and self-expression is the next principle. Independence, self-discipline and self-expression are essential to become an adult. So, when formulating objectives, this to be kept in mind. Next is the teacher-pupil ratio to be followed while framing the objectives of ECC. The teacher-pupil ratio should be kept in mind. If it is in urban area, teacher-pupil ratio can be 1 is to 25 and in rural area 1 is to 40. The last principle of ECC is availability of space for outdoor activities and free play in the windows. Equipment available based on the availability of space, number of children and teacher equipment to be purchased to be kept in mind before planning the objectives of ECC centers. To conclude this lesson, I would like to focus on the focus of the objectives of the ECCE preschool is on the holistic development of the child. Objectives emphasize on the provision of a rich and stimulating playful environment. The experiences gained through a variety of activities lead to intellectual, language, social, personal, emotional, and physical or motor development of the child. Instruction in ECCE is through play activities. Activities are conducted in small or large groups. Assessment is continuous and non-judgmental 
and not based on tests and assignments. The school environment encourages exploration and self-discovery for which there is a process of opportunity as well as the obligation providing a fair start to children as they move from home to the classroom and from the close environment of the family to the larger world. Thank you so much for listening the lesson on principles and objectives of ECC.